Hello and uh, welcome to yet another Equity for Keeps video. Today we bring you an opinion uh, about my, Mark Holbert. Mark Holbert is a regular contributor to uh, MarketWatch.com and he uh, titled this uh, Stocks are in bargains yet, but the buying opportunity will come. Here's how you know it's here. Four key ratios to valuation picture is a lot better than it was a month ago and uh, <coughs> we'll just quickly dive in here when we uh, still still when valuations become attractive enough courageous contra uh, contrarian minded investors will step up to the plate and start buying thereby cushioning the havoc wrecked by the panic selling when will that point be reached first Consider another qualification about valuations in today's market. Many of the variables on which some valuation metrics are based are shifting so fast in knowable, in knowable ways that little confidence can be placed in them. Take the price earning ratio, for example. There's no way of coming up with even a reasonable guess, est guess estimate of the impact of the coronavirus pandemic will have on the corporate earnings. But if earnings fall just as fast as the market, the price earnings ratio will remain unchanged. Fortunately, there are a handful of valuation ratios in which the denominator changes relatively slowly over time, enabling us with some of the confidence to know where they stand now. An example is the Q ratio, which was introduced by the late uh, James Tobin, the 1981 Nobel laureate in economics. It is calculated by dividing market value by the repl replacement cost of assets. That cost should be more or less the same day to day as it was in February. The same is true for the other three valuations on which I am focusing in this column. The price book ratio, book value changes relatively slowly. The cyclical adjusted price earnings ratio based on the average 10 year inflation adjusted earnings per share, which also changes slowly and the buffer indicator the ratio of the GDP to total value of all stocks. GDP is a lot less volatile than the stock market. To calculate how much these uh, less bearish, that is more bullish, uh, for indicators are today relative to where they were, where they stood, uh, the market's uh, February 19 bull market peak, I constructed for each econometric model that most likely fits the relationship between its historical readings and the S&P 500 subsequent 10 year inflation adjusted return. I then fed it fed uh, into that model the, indica the indicators February 19 reading and compared it to its current projection. The results appear in the chart below. Notice in all four cases the projected 10 year returns are markedly better that they were at the February top. On average, the four models are projecting a 1% annualized return over the inflation over the next decade. Adding dividends, you get an average projected return of about 3%. That is significantly higher than the comparable projections for the 10 year treasury, which are for a loss of 0.6% annualized based on the Cleveland. Fed's calculation of expected inflation over the next decade. Okay, so he concludes that uh, that's good news. Unfortunately, that's projected. Uh, unfortunately, these projected real returns over the next decade are still less than 6.8 percent analyzed uh, return the stock market has produced over the last two centuries. So it's not clear that contrarians are ready to buy equities in a big way. Still, a projected annual return. That is a uh, even modestly positive uh, is a lot better than what fundamental analysts were projecting just a few weeks ago. Okay, 
will provide a link to this um, so that you can read up yourself and do the uh, your own um, analysis with uh, the metrics he provided and uh, thank you for watching this video please subscribe subscribe to our channel and you will be notified once uh, we upload any video and uh, much more thank you